Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I got a surprise treat for you. All I can say is, yappa dabba doo! That's right. I finally got the complete series of the most popular primetime animated series in the history of television, The Flintstones. That's right, I can't believe this, it's on Blu-ray for the first time in 60 years. All held on two oversized Blu-ray cases, 10 discs, holding all 166 episodes. Each of them are 17 episodes on all discs, except for the last one, which contains the two movies, A Man Called Flintstone, and the WWE crossover called the Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown. Yeah. Plus, uh, just a clip of the original pilot episode and some featurettes um, that you can see on the back. Yeah. I, I know it has a different cover art that looks almost like something out of the Wheel of Fortune or perhaps maybe other game shows out there. It's kind of weird how they put it like that. But you do get the characters, Fred Flintstone, Barney Rubble, along with their wives, uh, Wilma and Betty, joining in with <laughs> their kids, Pebbles and Bam Bam, and you also got Dino, which happens to be the Flintstones uh, dinosaur dog. <laughs> yeah. And it's on both of them. This is Seasons 1 for free, right here. You got it right there. This nice uh, picture of, uh, of the entire game. Yeah, they were, <laughs> you have of course them wearing all these uh, water buffalo caps. Of course, because they always do the launch meeting. And of um, this, where you can see Fred, along with Wilma, Betty, and Barney joining in with uh, Dino as well as uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam and they're riding along in Fred's car yeah driving along in the town of Bedrock yeah you can see right there and I'm going to show you the disc here on each of them uh, disc one all the way through five it comes inside with a um, a pamphlet, so it tells you exactly how many discs that they have. So if you have to open it up, it tells you all the episodes that's included on each of these discs. And all the features that are right there. Yeah. And they held, uh, okay, I'm trying to put this back the way it was. So you can see all the discs right here. You got disc one with Fred Flintstone. Yeah, they put it in blue. Uh, you got two more discs here. This is disc two with Barney in green. Uh, disc three with Wilma in blue. Um, disc four with Betty in green. <laughs> and disc five, which happens to be... Um, course <laughs> pebbles in blue and then you got um, on this one which doesn't have the pamphlet because it's already there you got this six with Fred it's in the red or magenta you got Barney on this seven it's in orange Got this gate with Wilma, also in red, orange, or perhaps red. Uh, this nine with Betty, and finally this ten with Bam Bam. So, yeah. So it's all um, held up inside this wonderful case right there. <laughs> Okay. Also, uh, to join in with it, I did actually have this DVD, which contains two movies and five specials. You can see on the back, 
It does have both a man called Flintstone, the theatrical film, and it also has the WWE crossover, Stone Age Smackdown. But it does contain the Flintstones Little Big League, the Flintstones meet Rockla and Frankenstone, the Jetsons meet the Flintstones, now that's the real crossover movie right there. The Flintstones I Yabba Dabba Do and the Flintstones Holly Waka Bye Baby. Well, those are the only ones that's included on this DVD set. And I'm going to show you right here. Yeah, disc one and this two. Yeah. <laughs> well, one just has Fred, you know, sitting on the director's chair with shades on and the other one just has Pebbles and Bam Bam you know with Bam Bam holding the the uh, megaphone <laughs> and now that I show you the Blu-ray box set all I can say here is that I am so happy to finally own this set and I get to watch it on my Blu-ray player through my high definition uh, 32 inch uh, Sony Bravia TV and it just looks incredibly pristine high definition scans it, it looked to me like they must have taken these newer prints uh, from their older um, 35 millimeter or perhaps maybe 16 millimeter it doesn't matter which uh, well, well either way it could be one or the other because the show was shot in 4x3 it was never in widescreen it was always been shot this way so I'm glad they kept it in that format. But they put two black bars on the left and right. And the quality just looks brighter. As well as uh, had a lot of vibrant colors into it. I just watched the first three discs so far. And I couldn't believe how incredibly wonderful the transfer looks. Compared to all the previous releases that we've seen you know, on DVD. Um, I do have season one on DVD that came inside a Fred Flintstone slipcover when it was celebrating Cartoon Network's 20th anniversary back in 2012. But I have that somewhere in one of my boxes and I'm having trouble looking for it right now. So I, I wanted to show you that, but you know what? I figured, I think we probably already know already what it looks like and, and all, but therefore that was the only. DVD release I've ever got. I wish I had gotten some more separately with season 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Would have been perfect because it has all the features on there. What's sad to say, this Blu ray release did not port all of them, it just ported some of them. And which is a shame because I really would love to see all of that on Blu ray. Uh, the vintage commercials that they had, which which includes uh, the Winston cigarettes. I mean, it proves that, yes, the show is not just a family show. It's an adult-oriented one. They had the Bush beer. Uh, they had all the uh, ABC television promos for them when the show aired. They were in black and white. Sometimes they're in color. And depends on how the film quality looks. Yeah, it does seem a little rough at times. I mean, of course, but that's probably how I had to look, and they had to do the best they can to restore them, or just keep it that way. And I've, not to mention, um, the, the the most of all was that they had advertisements for one a day vitamins, which at this rate will have the Flintstones vitamins. Uh, they had, uh, of course, the pulse uh, cereals of, of fruity and cocoa pebbles. And they've been doing this for a very long time. And of course, you can get the Flintstones uh, vitamins at your local uh, pharmacy. Or you can get it at uh, any other store at markets. But now they have them in gummy form. But back in the day, they had them in tablets where they have all the characters. Except for Betty. But I think they later had Betty in the later ones. And all that. Yeah. Now... Of course, the show had aired on ABC, uh, ranging from 1960 all the way to 1966. Um, I know at the time, maybe at first when they had the first season, you know, it got criticized. 
but then over the years it, it got better as it follows and I guess people got used to it after a while uh, I know that the first opening of the first two seasons was the rise and shine theme that's where we see Fred Flintstone driving around his car and <laughs> trying to get to uh, bedrock on um, you know just getting his uh, his uh, his t-shirt that's in the the cleaners and then he was giving a newspaper and you know, driving around where you can see like the townspeople at bedrock yeah the the prehistoric uh, it's the the biggest town in prehistoric times <laughs> and yeah you see a cop and you know just stopping to to make way for the fire truck to come around and then he'll drive along with all the rest and of course when he gets back home you know he just closes the garage you know grabs the clothes and then goes inside the house and that's where we see Wilma who just brought him his food and <laughs> gives him a kiss and just sat down with Dino around just sleeping on the couch sleeping on the chair and then just went down <laughs> To relax uh, with Fred just watching TV as he turned it on. But then in the later seasons, uh, I think starting with season three, that's where they changed the familiar, you know, meet the Flintstones theme. Yeah, that's where we have Fred Flintstone at the rock quarry that he works at, you know, with his boss, Mr. Slate, sometimes it's known as Mr. Rockhead or Mr. Granite, <laughs> but it's always been Mr. Slate. Uh, then you see the the construction worker, you know, just looking at his watch and rings the the bell whistle, which happens to be <laughs> the bird, and that's where he says the famous line, "Yabba dabba doo," and he slits out from the dinosaur, winds up in the car, raising as fast as he can. I know in in the they had a lot of alternative uh, scenes uh, with that opening. Yeah, one is where Fred just. Uh, punches in the time clock uh, just so he can get back racing home just uh, get ready to go see a movie at a drive-in theater you know, to go see the movie called The Monster <laughs> where he joins in with uh, Wilma uh, Dino and uh, Baby Puss, I think that's what it was called I mean they never really call him but they always had uh, <laughs> the um, the cat that they join in and you know, they just go around watching a drive-in movie. And they later did the same thing, but with uh, Pebbles uh, joining in, uh, where she was just playing with her, uh, you know, her uh, builder's, uh, boulder's uh, sets, and take her along, along with Wilma, and Dino, and Baby Puss, and they just drive along to go see the drive-in movie. And then, then the next one, that's where we got uh, Bam Bam to join. And then that's where we have, um, you know, Betty and and Barney uh, joining in. So they end up riding around. So they go see a movie at the drive-in. <laughs> now, of course, at the end credits of season one, um, you know, after Fred just finished watching the TV, you know, all of his programs, uh, he was getting ready to go to bed. Yeah, Dino just winds up going back to the, the chair. Uh, he already saw Wilma in bed. Yeah, you don't see her mouth, but whatever. Uh, then uh, you saw Fred yawning after he, he closes the the bird cage, you know, with the bird around. And then all the neighbors were turning out their lights, getting ready to go to bed. While Fred just came outside, just bringing in two glasses, bottles of milk, and then brought in baby puss until he winds up going inside the house, locks the door, and then that's when. Fred just pounding on the door, telling Wilma to to open this door, and that's how he yells, Wilma! <laughs> um, they did a similar thing in the end credits of the later seasons, uh, where after they got out to go see a drive-in movie, uh, they went to go to um, to a local uh, drive-in restaurant, you know, so they can have uh, a, a big pound of <laughs> a ribs. Um, yeah, which I know they did it um, alternative as well, and, and that's where you got to see um, Pebbles uh, later on. 
Yeah, and it's funny how you don't see uh, Betty, uh, Barney, not even the Bam Bam on the side. So, yeah, that was kind of strange um, in the later seasons. And, uh, of course, um, you know, they, they go straight to the Flintstones' house. I mean, later season, of course, they show a close-up of both uh, Wilma holding uh, pebbles in her hand. Um, and uh, but sometimes they just show... Uh, Wilma just walking around, going inside, just when they're getting ready to get in the house, uh, joining with Dino and and even the cat. And that's where, of course, Fred just takes out uh, one glass uh, bottle of milk and then try to take uh, Baby Puss outside. But then he just goes straight into the window, locks the door, and and that's where he shouts, Wilma! And he just keeps pounding the door and trying to open it. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. I always love this. So, of course, you already know the story about uh, the show. It's it's basically an animated version of The Honeymooners said in Prehistoric Times. Which is funny because Jack Gleason himself um, was tempting to sue them, yeah, the Hanna-Barbera team, for actually using his idea. But, but then he felt like, you know what? He, he changes his mind. I, I don't want to deal with this. And because he's afraid that it's going to lead to publicity, thinking that they're going to say that I'm the guy who murdered Fred Flintstone. So that was the case. So, well, he had to leave it that way. And um, and I guess it's true because it does seem have a similar vibe to it. Um, hey, Yogi Bear was pretty much uh, similar to that, where they actually have Yogi Bear sound a little bit like Ed Norton there. So I, that's how I noticed here, too. Um, and of course, because at the time, Hanna-Barbera was doing a lot of uh, animated shorts, um, all of which had got released in feeders. Yes, remember when they used to play cartoons in feeders? Well, of course, I wasn't born, so I was born in 1985. Maybe in those times and eras, from when I was doing some research and find out about that, I didn't even know they played cartoons like... Uh, after or perhaps even before a movie. So, but it's cool, you know, how they always show a lot of short films before we get to the movie. Sometimes they even play the news at the end. It's kind of like watching television here. Okay. But, um, yeah, because at the time, though, Hanna-Barbera had a lot of shorts like Tom and Jerry, you know, Droopy. Um, I think Yogi Bear kind of joined in, too. And they had Quick Draw, McGraw, Huckleberry Hound, Snagglepuss, and all. All your familiar characters. And I know we also had some more shows that follow, you know, like Top Cat and uh, all these other Hanna Barbera cartoons that we got. Even Scooby Doo joins in. We, we got the Jetsons. Yeah. Which that was that was their second uh, primetime animated series that's set in the futuristic world. Yeah, but sadly it only lasted one season until it, it got revived in the 80s. With seasons two and three as part of the f the fantastic uh, world of Hanna Barbera um, block that they played back in the 80s. Yeah, and anyway, uh, the Flintstones was so popular enough that yes, they had a lot of spin offs and, and movies too. I already mentioned A Man Called Flintstone was one of them, and they had um, the spin off series such as um, The Flintstones Comedy Hour, uh, The Pebbles and Bam Bam Show. Uh, the Fred and Bonnie show. Um, there's like, there's like tons. You know, like Cave Kids, so the Flintstones kids. Um, and of course, they they even got the Flintstones comedy show. Uh, they got the Rebels, uh, the Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs, which I think that was going to be the new reboots for 2020. I don't know that. I think they aired that too. I know they. I haven't seen that one, because that's the one that we're going to air on Cartoon, or, yeah, I think it was going to be on Boomerang and then Cartoon Network. Um, but then, of course, they had a lot of, um, I mean, they got, a, like, tons of them, actually. <laughs> There's a lot of specials here, like the Flintstones on Ice, a Flintstone Christmas, 
Um, I already mentioned the other ones too, like Little Big League, Meat, Broccoli, and Frankenstone. You got The New Neighbors, Fred's Final Fling, Wind Up Wilma, Jogging Fever, The 25th Anniversary Celebration, The Just Say No Special for the Flintstones Kids, um, Hannah Barbera's 50th I Yabba Dabba Do Celebration, and even A Family Christmas for, yeah, Flintstone Family Christmas. Of course, we also have a Flintstones Christmas Carol and the Flintstones on the Rocks, which came out in 2001. A uh, very underrated um, movie. And we have the live action films uh, the Flintstones that came out in 1994 with John Goodman, along with Elizabeth Perkins, Rosie O'Donnell, Rick Moranis, uh, as well as um, Holly Berry, um, Elizabeth Taylor. And even the Cal McLaughlin and all the rest. And I saw that in theaters and I loved it. And it also follows with Beaver Rock Vegas, you know, which we had Mark Addy from the Full Monty. We got Stephen Baldwin. Uh, we got um, uh, Christian Johnson from Ferd Rock. We also had that one actress from the TV show Alec McBeal. Uh, Jane Kogrosky, uh played uh, Betty. And it, it also had Ellen Cumming, and um, and we got all the rest of the actors to join in. Um, unfortunately, though, yes, uh, both films got negative reviews, and well, one of them became a box office bomb. Not the first one, but the second one did. That's a shame. But I, I did enjoy both of them. I don't care what anybody says. Um... Now, getting back to that, the series itself, uh, yeah, they followed around with the animation. They changed um, drastically over the years, and they tend to get better and better. I mean, the first season was pretty rough at times. Um, now, you probably noticed that um, they were all played by um, actors uh, Alan Reed, along with Mel Blanc, Harvey Corman, as the Great Kazoo. Yeah, he only appears in season six. It was the tiny green alien who just appears in bedrock uh, on a tiny small spaceship and only Fred and Barney can see him. Uh, just giving him all the commands that they want. You know the rest. <laughs> but I'm just giving you uh, examples here. You know, like they always want like all the stuff that they're going to bring to their wives or they always like to... Uh, you know, ask for their nothings to uh, take over, you know, just to switch places. You know, like their wives want to go out with them while they end up going out, you know, doing something important. So that will give them their spare time, even before their boss shows up. Jerry Johnson would later take over as the voice of Betty in seasons five and six. Um, Dolls Butler would take over for a little while for Barney, um, which I'm going to explain afterwards. And sometimes he'll probably end up doing different voice acting for other characters. Um, they got Howard Morton, Frank Nelson, Alan uh, Mellon, um, which I know he, he did other stuff too for other characters, and a whole lot more. Even with the special guest stars, you know, Anne Margaret, Tony Curtis. Um, they even got uh, <laughs> Elizabeth McCovery with Dick York. Yeah, because yeah, they did uh, do an episode with uh, Bewitch. Makes sense, because both of these shows were from Screen Gems. Yeah, and, and more. I uh, know I'm going to explain it again. Also to note, though, that the show had been broadcast in black and white originally even though the show has always been in color because it's not like they animated it in black and white I mean that will probably take a lot of work it would never colorize this way uh, it's because I think at the time uh, for budgetary reasons uh, ABC uh, just weren't ready to broadcast uh, TV shows in color until sometime in the mid 60's but then other shows uh, would still be in black and white until the following season when they'll end up being in color. 
Um, they, they've done that for, for other networks too, like CBS and NBC. Um, I know Fox was not around yet until 1986, uh, but of course the lineup started in 87. During the first season, you probably noticed that uh, Barney's voice was was pretty much original. Sounds quite different as we expected. It sounded more New Jerseyan type. But then, as it follows uh, during, like maybe the last half of the first season, and then getting to the early season two, that's when his voice started to change. Uh, mostly because uh, the actor Mel Blanc. Uh, had a car accident, um, so he was being sent to the hospital. He hasn't had time to do the rest of the voice of Barney, so they had Don's butler to take over, and that's why it makes him sound a little bit like Ed Norton there. And they used him for a little while until um, Mel Blanc fully recovered from his wounds and went back to it, and I think he saw uh, some of the episodes with Don's butler doing the voice. And, I think he loved it so much that he decided to to create this particular voice as as familiar as today. You know, the voice as we all know, um, to make him sound, you know, as as pretty much Ed Norton, just as goofy as it could be. And I know Fred for instance was supposed to sound more like Ralph Crandom too and and uh, Wilma is supposed to sound more like uh, Alice and and Betty is supposed to sound like Trixie. <laughs> so yeah. So of course it continues to go on with second and then the third season came along and yeah, something new has to change. All of them but even for the first uh, three seasons it's basically adult oriented as it is. But it's getting to the point where yes by then um, they know that uh, of course we have Arnold uh, the newspaper boy delivering papers and all. I mean of course he's been around you know, during throughout the entire series, but you, you get the idea. And all those other situations that they're going through, you know, always, you know, Fred and Barney, you know, going out for bowling or going to hang out with his friends, their friends, and, you know, just play poker, you know, do all these uh, conflict situations. Um, of course, Fred always goes to work at, at the Rock Quarry. I mean, Barney has his own job, too. Uh, they always, whenever they come back home for work, you know, they come back home, you know, after both their wives, Wilma and Betty, you know, doing their housework. They come around, they bring their food that they just cook for them, and so they can have a big meal. And then after that, they just get ready to either, you know, watch TV or just go out to see a movie or do all this other stuff. Sometimes they have a lot of arguments, other times they'll just have, you know, a lot of, um, sit a lot of conflicts and stuff happening here and there. You know, they want to do what they want to do. He wants to do what he wants to do. You know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> and sometimes, of course, Dina will come over. You know, just be happy. You know, just like all dogs do. You know, they come over, they jump on them, and they start kissing you and, and all. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, they do all that. But then, during the, I think it was. Like the course of the third, nearing the already to the fourth season, um, that's where they had the course, um, and I think maybe that's around that time. Yes, that's where they had Pebbles, and this is where they had changed the show from being an adult oriented to family friendly, and that's how I've been that way ever since. And and then the the, the following season. Um, they had uh, Bam Bam that uh, both uh, Barney and, and Betty had adapt. Um, because unfortunately they've been seen uh, and selfishly, but not really. I mean, they, they know they want to have fun. They want to hang around with Pebbles a lot, so I can see that. And they felt like, you know, hopefully someday they'll definitely have a child of their own. And, well, you know, they got one. But they're having trouble, you know, trying to adapt them. Yeah. So of course, Pebbles is a girl and, and Bam Bam's a boy. It always says Bam, 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 Bam. And then later on, they got Hoppy, the, the kangaroo, <laughs> the green kangaroo, because they needed a pet too. So 
They're part of it. And yeah, we also get guest stars such as Anne Margaret uh, has a memorable episode there, and, and we also got Stoney Curtis, and we got all these other um, famous people around. I, I think. Um, I mean, there's like tons of episodes that you can think about. And getting to the fact that yes, this was the longest running uh, primetime animated series of all time, and that was before The Simpsons came along, which beats its record. And of course we have Family Guy, Futurama, King of the Hill, which I know that started before these shows did. Um, and I know we have uh, other shows that they follow too. I know we had the short-lived The Critic and all these other short-lived shows that they were coming out with, like Dinosaurs was another one. And if it wasn't for the Flintstones, yeah, we would have never had any of these primetime animated series to follow as decades went along. Yeah, and that's how it became so popular over the years. I mean, they had like tons of video games and you know, videos, DVDs, um, Blu-rays, of course, and you know, they have books. They have a lot of merchandising around. I mean, they they had a theme park too, dedicated to the Flintstones. Um, they even had a theme attraction for for Universal Studios. Um, they had everything. I mean. That's why it, it remains for 60 years as one of the most popular shows of all time and the most popular animated uh, cartoons ever made. And that's why we all love uh, the Flintstones. I mean, I mean, I grew up watching this show um, ever since I was a kid, and I never even knew it was an adult-oriented show until I, f I found out about that as years went along, because they come on like every morning. Like, uh, or even in the afternoons, too, on KTTV Fox 11. And I remember it because it was on uh, as part of the uh, children's block. So it's hard to believe that a, a sitcom like this could be part of it. I mean, imagine if, if The Simpsons was on uh, during the Saturday morning block. That would be really crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but that's how they did it though, at the time. And the Jetsons did the same thing, too. They, they've done a lot. Yeah, and I know I'm, I'm t I have to slip here. So of course, because um, it's good for the children around, as opposed to adults too, like like me, because I was a kid once. Um, and I and I remember, you know, they they come on every time, and I and no matter when it whenever it's on TV, I I just watch it. I love it, and I always take the vitamins from the Flintstones, you know, such as Fred, Barney. Yeah, Betty, uh, Pebbles, Bam Bam, and all. And I think Betty joins in too. Um, because I know originally they didn't have it, but yeah. <laughs> Just so I can get ready to go to school. <laughs> and then I always have the cereal, you know, Fruity and Cocoa Pebbles cereal. And I still have that cereal today, and I love it. And and I, I remember I used to have the t-shirt of the Flintstones, which had Fred Flintstone and the rest of the game. Uh, when I got that for my birthday, uh, my 12th birthday, it was really cool. And um, I think I used to have one of the old VHS tapes uh, before it got lost. I, I, I even used to rent them too. You know, whenever we get bored, you know, we watch a lot of cartoons. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I grew up with the show and the same way I grew up with a lot of Saturday morning and weekday morning and afternoon cartoons that I loved back in the 80s and 90s and I never get tired of them you know no matter how many prints that they got I mean yeah I remember they had the older prints of the show and they, they always ended with the Screen Gems logo um, well in the later seasons uh, they had the Screen Gems uh, Dancing Sticks logo and then next they had the S from Hell logo as they referred to but then it, but then at times they just had the program exchange logo and then they later got replaced by the Hanna Barbera logo from 1994 when they did a remaster because this would be the same year as the live action movie that came out yeah and they had to restore it everything too <laughs> the way it was and that's how it was on the DVD before we now have the new release uh, with newer prints and now the show, because um, I know the show was on TBS, uh, even in the 80s and, and 90s too, 
as well as TNT, and Cartoon Network played it as well, and then later Boomerang. And now they play it on MeTV um, since last year, and they're still carrying the older prints, but now they finally got the newer prints, uh, which is also on streaming. Uh, they have it on Boomerang. Uh, well, the, they still had the previous um, one, prints from 1994 on the Boomerang uh, streaming app that's on Amazon Prime, but they do carry the HBO Max uh, streaming app that has the newer prints of the Flintstones, so you get to see those. But now that I have them on Blu-ray, I get to watch it anytime. And I'm just so impressed by the transfer. The only episode um, that needs to be fixed, uh, they have a replacement disc for it, and that is uh, the Big Bank Robbery. That's episode 17, season 1. Uh, it had an audio error, which you can only hear the dialogue, not the sound effects, nor the music. So that needs to be fixed. Uh, they actually confirmed it, so they did fix it. Unfortunately, uh, I'd sent an email to them, and they said that by their message, because due to COVID, uh, they're expecting a, a like a maybe a week delay or so. It might be like in early December or maybe in mid December that these discs will show up by mail, and hopefully this will be perfect. Hopefully it doesn't create the same mistake. Because I know Warner Bros. have done this uh, this uh, stunt uh, several times with their shows. Tying to the Avengers is a prime example of that. Because when I got Volume Four. On DVD, I noticed that one episode, which is a parody of, of Saturday Night Live called Weekday Afternoon Live, um, you get the first half of the episode, but then the second half turned out to be uh, the parody of MTV, Toon TV, and that was a big uh, messed up right there. And, and since then, they had to fix it. Uh, I had to wait until a couple months later to finally pick this up at Best Buy because I had bought it once and it came with the, the slip cover or slip case but now um, now I have to get one that doesn't come with it but oh well but hey it was perfect it, it completed the sets and error free the way it is so I hope this will do the same for the Flintstones um, so it's a wonderful set yep um, I'm sorry I had to talk this long but I just want to say that, you know, I always love the show. Um, it's true to my heart. It will always be a classic, no matter what, even after 60 years. And from beginning to end, I mean, you'll never get tired of it. So that's my Blu-ray review of the Flintstones uh, box set. And I did show you the DVD of um, the movies and specials to join in as an extra here <laughs> so um, pick this up I got this for $16.99 it's actually going down to $44.48 as I'm doing this and <laughs> at Target though um, but it was worth it uh, for that alone so if you love the Flintstones and you want the entire episodes on Blu-ray head it to your local Target or any other store and see if they carry it I know it's been released uh, several times. I mean, they now had a box set that's part of the Hanna-Barbera Diamond Collection, but that has no features. And it's all crammed in with all the other disc uh, balls, but I wouldn't recommend getting that. Unless you want to, if you just want the episodes. Um, but I suggest just getting the Blu-ray because you'll be able to see how, how pristine the transfer really looks. I mean, all the vibrant colors, all brighter, not darker anymore like it was. This is the best this series is ever going to look. Um, the sound quality, it's lossy, uh, lossy uh, Dolby Audio. I know, sorry about my time trister here. But that's what you get. <laughs> but all in all, it's perfect. Perfect for the whole family. So, anyway, that's my review. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and yabba dabba doo. I'll see you later. Bye.